Feeling hungry, my friend? Here, have a snack. Winter has arrived, and with its arrival comes a soothing, shimmering white blanket that drapes around the surroundings. Couples can be seen gliding gracefully across the Black Lake on ice skates, enjoying the scenic backdrop and capturing beautiful memories in photographs. As you stand here, you're overcome with a mixture of disappointment and anticipation, as the persistent matchmaking issue continues to prevent you from enjoying your daily matches for what feels like an eternity. Indeed, that day has been etched into my memory. It was the day of the Championship Cup, and the match started acting strangely, suddenly lagging and moving like a slideshow. And then, without warning, the match servers went down. It was the moment that sparked an unfolding mystery, as the cause and full extent of the matchmaking problem remained unknown. It was evident that during the server shutdown, the developers quickly implemented a temporary solution to force us onto bot servers, thereby restricting our ranking to a maximum of 7200 points. It's true that there is some misinformation floating around about this issue only affecting players who have migrated from Warner Bros accounts to NetEase accounts. However, I can personally confirm that I am experiencing this issue on both my original Warner Bros account and my existing NetEase account, which makes it clear that the problem is not only affecting those who have migrated and is impacting players on both types of accounts. And let's not forget the incorrect assumption that this issue is connected to Warner Bros. The problem started back in September, and the Warner Bros servers only shut down in October. It's clear that there's no logical correlation between the two events. Before jumping to conclusions, it's crucial to understand what servers truly are. Servers are powerful machines with designated tasks, including matchmaking servers, game servers, and other types, like authentication and database servers. Simply blaming servers doesn't help to pinpoint the exact source of the problem. We must look deeper into the specifics of each server's role to isolate the real cause of the issue. The matchmaking servers handle the pairing of players for matches. The game servers host the actual matches and manage gameplay events. The authentication servers handle user login and verification processes. And last but not least, the database servers store and manage persistent game data, such as player accounts and match history. When we analyze the roles of each server type, it's clear that our problem is most likely related to the matchmaking servers. The issue is, is that we are unable to find any matches with real players, which suggests the matchmaking servers are not functioning as intended. There's another question we need to answer. Is the matchmaking server not functioning as intended due to a bug, or has it been intentionally tuned to work this way? Let's take a step back to September when we experienced lagging in the matches. It seems the real issue was likely with the game servers responsible for handling the duels, and not the matchmaking servers. Here's a potential theory to consider. In pursuit of expanding the player base and attracting more revenue, NetEase organized the transfer of accounts for Warner Bros players. Everything seemed to be going smoothly until the Championship Cup started. Due to the sudden rush of players trying to participate in the duels, the game servers may not have been properly equipped to handle the increased player density in matches. After taking down the servers, the NetEase team likely recognized the importance of the Championship Cup to players and the game as a whole, and decided to continue it despite the ongoing server issues. The NetEase team seems to have taken a drastic step to isolate players from less revenue-generating regions. This was done by connecting them to empty bot servers. The goal was to bring the servers back online without overloading the system. It's natural for players to feel confused and frustrated by the lack of communication from the NetEase team and the time it's taking to address these ongoing issues. Other big companies often have additional servers in place for unforeseen circumstances. The key question is, did the damage inflicted require NetEase to prioritize other investments over improving infrastructure? Or are our regions being affected due to lower revenue generation? Regardless, the silence from the team is perplexing and concerning for the players dealing with these issues. It begs the question, What's behind NetEase's silence on this issue? Is there a reluctance to address the problem? Or are they not communicating due to a mistake they're reluctant to acknowledge? I recently came across news about NetEase employees being arrested in an alleged multi-million dollar fraud scheme that involves close to 30 companies. The key individuals involved in this fraud investigation are Shang Lang, who served as both the general manager of marketing and the former head of NetEase's esports division, and Jin Yuchen, who previously oversaw the distribution and marketing center. In addition, there are several other employees under Shang Lang's authority, 
who are also being investigated as part of this expansive fraud operation. The employees under scrutiny are accused of money laundering and bribery. They're alleged to have engaged in purchasing counterfeit traffic to promote NetEase products. This has led to an investigation by Chinese police, following reports from NetEase's internal anti-corruption division. The ongoing investigations indicate that there may be serious internal issues at NetEase, which could result in substantial financial and operational impacts across the company's projects. Given the current state of affairs, do you think a company in NetEase's position, with corruption accusations and ongoing investigations, would prioritize addressing the challenges faced by players on the global server of Harry Potter? The question is open to discussion, but I firmly believe that this will be the last game from NetEase I ever play. It's undeniable that this game is distinctive in its approach to dueling, offering a gameplay experience that's irreplaceable by other games. Despite the challenges, we find ourselves attached to the game due to the bonds we've formed with our friends. Many of us have moved on to other games, but I urge everyone not to uninstall the game just yet. Sometimes things tend to settle down on their own, so let's be patient. Another action we can take is to sign the petition, as doing so can potentially expedite the resolution process through social resonance. Signing the petition may not compel NetEase to take immediate action, but it will consistently demonstrate our collective determination in seeking a solution to our problems. By signing the petition, we're not only expressing our demand for a resolution, but also learning to advocate for what's fair and communicate our perspective effectively. To sign the petition, simply scan this QR code on the screen or click on the direct link provided in the description below the video. After registering, you'll be set to sign the petition. Please remember to share it on your social media pages, allowing your friends to sign and show their backing. I invite each of you to join my live streams every evening. I understand that watching me face bot opponents may not be thrilling content, nor is it likely to promote my channel. However, my primary motivation is to work toward a common goal. The more people we engage, the greater our impact will be. So, I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching until the end. Of course, I understand this information doesn't provide a solution to the problem, but I hope it serves as a friendly morale booster. I appreciate any comments you may have about this issue, and I'm interested to learn how you are staying motivated and disciplined during these uncertain times. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and we'll see you in the next episode. What if we joined forces and asked NetEase for help solving this issue? Ivy, I know it's not easy to accept, but sometimes the real world throws us challenges that are difficult to overcome. It's not always fair, but it's important to stay strong and find ways to cope with the situation.